Mizuno is fast becoming one of those brands that is getting more and more expensive, especially in the second-hand market. But with that all being said, I think I found a full set for an unbelievable price. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon on his way. Don't know why I'm putting myself in third person um, to pick up um, a full set of Mizuno clubs. Driver, wood, irons. I do say full set. There is one iron missing out of the irons, but I think that's going to be easily replaceable and a good reason why this set is such a good deal. Because Mizuno clubs, as I said in the intro, just getting more and more expensive, just like Ping. Very much sought after. Now, the 825, the JPX 825s, not really as sought after however they're going to do just as good job as your 900 um, uh, and anything else that's a bit more sleek and modern mizuno have done very well over the last couple of years of really getting rid of the blue getting a bit more traditional a bit more modern and sleek and um, well i think that's why they're definitely competing a lot more uh, in terms of the second hand market as well as obviously club fitting and building the brand as it is but 150 pounds i've paid for the everything collection only so again that's probably why the price was a bit cheaper and it's missing a six iron but I think I'm going to be able to replace that quite easily um, uh, and obviously then have a full set of clubs which realistically is going to be worth like 300 to 400 pounds also picking up two more wedges on my travels um, uh, so I've got basically a full set for 200 pounds um, uh, which again just goes to show you guys you don't have to spend a fortune to get a very decent bag quite like these like travel videos where I'll go and pick up clubs show you where I get them or how my tips and tricks and you guys seem to like these videos as well so if you wouldn't mind leaving this video a like subscribing if you're new comment down below what do you think of my deal I think we should go and pick them up 40 minutes later I have a full set of JPX 825 woods and irons obviously the six iron is still missing but the overall condition is really good I'll wait till I get up to the range to show you um, them in all their glory um, uh, I wanted to get the irons first so I know how to match the shaft lie angle length everything exactly so it matches the set nicely but for 150 this whole set is an absolute steal and um, JPX is just a very forgiving range and for a lot of you guys that are looking for potentially a kind of under the radar Mizuno iron um, uh, uh, the 825s it's going to be a good model I haven't hit it yet it's going to be a good model it's going to do everything that you want it to do right it's enough talking I need to go and pick up the two other wedges now and then get up to the range and hit and both Mac Daddy wedges now acquired I didn't realize how dark it's actually getting so I'm not gonna be able to hit them today I think I'm gonna take Blake to the range tomorrow whilst we'll have a bit of a daddy daughter day at the range and uh, give the irons and these all a test and obviously show you guys um, uh, the condition um, and I might actually put the woods and these on eBay tonight and see if I can sell them overnight to show you what I would sell them for or the prices for and then obviously the margin because a lot of you guys are quite interested in the flipping side catch you tomorrow Boom, golf bag on back, baby in hand. I'm taking it to Nan and Grandad's as I think it's against many child labor laws to actually take it to the range. But anyway, there she is, there's the clubs. Let's get to the golf club. And we're here at Sanford Springs Golf Club. And before I show you what 200 pounds worth of your money can get you on eBay and Facebook alone, I forgot to put the clubs up on eBay last night. It got too dark, didn't want to take really rubbish photos. So I put them up this morning, but obviously I can't give you an update whether they're sold or not. Um, uh, but at the moment I've got the wedges at 95 pounds, obviously including delivery and everything else. I've got the woods at 120 and the driver at 80, I think. So anyway, the idea is that if they all sell somewhere near those prices, then obviously the profit is gonna be purely on the iron. So I need to find a good six iron to match the set. Um, but overall, the bag looks very good. Let me show you. So if you ignore this sexy little thing in the top right hand corner here, that's gonna be for a future video. I've spent 300 pounds on this bag. And if you're just starting the game, that's quite a good looking bag. Now. The reason I bought this for £150 and didn't really look at the description is because I saw seven irons 
in the thumbnail or the picture displaying these as well as three woods and I thought for £150 that's just a superly good price what I didn't realise is it's missing a six iron and there's actually a gap wedge or sand wedge in the bottom which is really good because potentially I could just sell that individually I'm not going to this doesn't really gap that well now but this wasn't really bought intended to match this set all I'm trying to show you realistically is what you can do for £300 um, the woods Mizuno not the best woods in the world they've got better over the years but also that being said because they're not so sought after unlike the irons Mizuno irons very expensive second hand market woods not so so you can get ST190 um, uh, GT 180 whatever it might be for stupidly low price in immaculate condition even brand new um, uh, so Mizuno woods I'm not saying they're the worst but they don't look the best and they don't sound the best ball speed they're as good as anything else but if you're looking for aesthetics Potentially, this is going to be something that's a bit more out there. Now, the black JPX 825s actually look better, I think, personally, than a lot of the more recent ones that have come out. Irons, however, probably not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I'm quite glad that um, Mizuno got rid of the blue um, throughout. I know, obviously, Mizuno um, uh, throughout their branding forever has always been blue. But I think it just turns off too many people um, and the silver matte black finish that they've gone for over the last couple of years I think have definitely helped them because the product is really good as I say cast irons So they're not going to feel as good as forged irons for example But if you're starting does it really matter these are going to be just as good Is it the 921s? I don't really read up on new stuff anymore um, uh, The new 921 um, irons that have come out from Mizuno for example um, uh, They're going to be pretty much as good as that and as I say I've picked them up for I don't know if you take out the wood it's 90 pounds obviously you've got to spend 40 to put a six iron in there but overall to get you started in the game not too bad so let's talk condition because unlike the woods which obviously you've seen in the photos and videos and now um, uh, the top of them have very much been skied which again is going to devalue them but what I would say to a lot of you guys that are starting the game it's quite a common fault that because you're coming over the top you're going to hit the ground dirt gets in between the ball and your club and it's going to scar the top so I'm not saying it's pretty but rather than buying a brand new one that's pristine and then doing it yourself because I've been there and it hurts and you stand on the tee crying for a good 20 minutes why not just practice with someone else's woods that they've already done it to to the point that you're now not going to come over the top and this guy the living daylights out of it as well unlike the wedges however now obviously I've put these up for 94.99 which is quite a lot for Mac Daddy 2 wedges but the condition of these is exceptional and they've got brand new grips on them and the grooves are very sharp therefore that's kind of how I rate wedges it doesn't matter if it's a Mac Daddy 3, 4, 5 whatever if the grip's good and the grooves are sharp really doesn't matter there's so many limitations that grooves and wedges have to conform to that for the likes of me and you a couple of hundred RPM here and there is going to make the slightest bit of difference and overall I think the rust effect actually looks really good so we'll see if they go they might not might have to drop them down in price but overall as like an investment with I kind of made a 20 second decision looking at all of it the pre price is reflected because I had to collect it myself the condition of the woods obviously sky marks everything else and then a missing six iron but if you kind of fill those blanks I mean realistically it's a 450 pound set I think I was a bit ambitious thinking I'm just going to be able to get out of the golf course and hit a few shots but play a couple of holes obviously these clubs aren't really suited to me but that's not the point of this video it's more about well what you can get for your money really tell you what that would have been a perfect six iron there five iron taken tell you what actually really impressed with the way that came off felt very solid and um, felt very powerful I mean I've hit five iron there but I mean it's flown all the way down to the bottom and I know from experience that's about 220 yards um, but overall feeling wise actually really good considering it's a cast iron head now I do feel okay phone retrieved as I was saying reg flex seems to suit me more now than stiff and X flex mainly because I have this massive block right from all the long drive training and using very stiff shafts um, and trying to hit up on the ball constantly I think that has some effect in terms of why I keep pushing everything but needless to say don't always worry about this flex of a shaft I swing it very fast for an average golfer but at the moment a regular flex shaft is actually helping me because it finishes it back on target 
So something to think about. Okay, 58 degree wedge coming out, about 65 yards from the flag. Let's see how quickly it stops. Can you tell I don't use a 58 degree wedge? I think I actually might put these Callaways in the bag because the price that I put them on eBay, the reason I put them there because I feel that's what they're worth, but to be honest, it's quite a lot of money to pay for two wedges that, are, that old. I think I might just put them in the bag. I've lost my 50, I've lost my 60 and I've lost my 54 degree wedge. So currently I'm constantly chipping with one at 50 degree wedge at the moment. So any video you see me with my normal wedges or chipping, it's just with a 50 degree. So I might actually just get rid of that and put these both in the bag. Oh, that is very short. Right, let's see if I can go and find a tee that I can hit some of these woods to give you a bit of feedback. Um, even though I probably know what I'm going to say anyway. Um, uh, wedges. Very interesting. I've hit every wedge under the sun. New, old, illegal, junior, ladies, left-handed, whatever it might be. And it all comes down to one thing technique sometimes I have too much spin like when I'm hitting a wedge from the fairway in England winter do I need all that spin no because I have to land it like 20 yards past the flag or hit a knockdown shot which defies the point of even having a very spinny wedge in the bag anyway obviously if you live in places like America or Australia or any hot country where the greens or even Lynx courses around the coast of England and Wales and Scotland and Ireland then obviously you're gonna need some spin. But for 80% of us that live inland, not really. Now, as much as I'd like you to believe that was my first drive with this driver teeing it up on the par five here at Sandwich Springs, it wasn't. Let me show you my first drive. And when it comes to drivers, if you leave that club face open by about 30 degrees, guess what? It's going to go right and even further right. And same again to the left-hand side. Drivers, the most important factor is the club's travelling towards the target and the face is also pointing in that direction. Hence, you always hit a straight drive. That will also give you the most efficiency when it comes to ball speed and then also better launch, better spin, i.e. long drives. I've ripped that. Second one, ripped it. Straight up the hill. Probably one of the longest drives this year. But that's because I hit it out the middle and it had very little curvature and there's no wind and it's done more than enough for me now to hit an iron into the green. But no matter how much money I spend on drivers, no matter how much money I get fitted, you're only as good as your technique. And if you have a bad shot, just like I showed you in the outtakes there, there's no driver on this planet that's going to help you. Now we're not going to play my good one, we're going to play my bad one because this is kind of five wood length. For a lot of people i'm gonna have to take a bit off it but obviously it gives me a good indication of what this club's like off the ground now i'm not quite sure how good that is because i've never hit five wood from that length but it looked online and definitely got up had the right sound that a five wood should have however they do look clumsy now like when i'm standing over it it does look quite cheap as a package set but then again that's why you're going to three wood and a five wood for like 100 pounds or 110 pounds and there's a lot of them out there whether it's ping Callaway, TaylorMade, whatever it might be, you have to just go back a few years. The good thing about Mizuno is because they actually do spend a bit of money in R&D, but for whatever reason, they're just not as sought after. But then also I can see why, because they do look like they've just come out of Argos. Five wood obviously isn't the club from that position. I thought I caught it too good. I'm just gonna knock it out and then um, uh, we'll use the new JPX wedge that I got with this set. All right then, quick look at what's to come on the channel. Very excited to show you these two putters. Let's see if it holds it. That's the first putt I've had with that thing and it's felt like nothing else I've actually put in my hands, which is interesting. The amount of clubs and putters I've tried and tested. Uh, it's very rare that something I put in my hands is actually a bit different. So excited to review that and show you the other putter that I have in my possession. So guys, there you have it. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave it a like. Subscribe if you are new. Catch you guys later.